all this gushing in the media about the new Mazda BT-50 and, by extension, the D-Max, it really has to stop. Details next. I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au and I get new cars cheap for buyers here in Australia. You can inquire at the website about that. Mazda has divorced Ford somewhat acrimoniously after about 30 years and they've hopped polygamously straight in the jacuzzi with Isuzu. We all knew it was coming. Perversely, Volkswagen has jumped into bed with Ford and together this unlikely pair are expecting a new Amarok after 18 odd months of gestation. The car industry really is a bad Caligula reboot, at least at times. So 2020 Amaroks will be interesting, and that's about as kind as I can be about Volkswagen and Ford cohabitating in Thailand. Meanwhile, back in Mazda Isuzu territory, also in Thailand, incidentally, a so-called all-new D-Max will debut for the first time in eight years, albeit with the same crappy engine and Dickensian mechanical layout as D-Max is stretching back almost to the Big Bang. Yes. Joined at the hip to D-Max, BT-50 will thus transition soon from ugly Ranger to a much sexier-looking D-Max-based product, one which actually looks like a current Mazda. And you haven't been able to say that about a BT-50 since... Uh, about 2013. Remember the smiley face 2013 Mazda 3? That's where the inspiration, if that's the right word, for the somewhat confronting face of BT-50 originated and where it persisted for eight long years, steadfastly ignoring Mazda's Kodo Soul of Motion styling. Whatever the hell that means. I don't normally comment on aesthetics, okay, and that's principally because you've got eyes and presumably they work, and because styling is so damn subjective, but I really do think 999 out of 1,000 ute buyers would agree that BT-50 has, for years now, been a suboptimal styling adaptation. Fugly in the vernacular, hashtag Australia. This, of course, was great news for bull bar manufacturers, right? Because no real men wanted to be seen driving behind that absurd, oversized grin. Everything in life is a good news, bad news story, at least to some degree. So Mazda delivered a shipping container of yen to Isuzu for the privilege of sidestepping the burden of R&Ding their own ute again, and in exchange they got some concessions to Mazda bait, if that's a verb, which I just invented, yes. <laughs> to Mazda bait the 2021 D-Max. Doubtless, this unlikely pair of dizygotic twins are going to roll down the line together at the Isuzu factory in Thailand, and it'll be kind of up to the marketing departments in both camps to sell the message hard that they're really very different vehicles. Different indeed. That process is starting now. Mazda just let this guy from Car Advice stand in a dingy shed next to an air conditioner to gush about the new Mazda BT-50. And they let this guy, who used to be from Car Advice, into the staff car park above ground to gush in a similar fashion. And if I were Mazda, I too would only invite influencers who were guaranteed to gush. Unfortunately, however, to me, Gushing is not all that helpful for actual ute buyers like you looking to burn, I don't know, 60 grand in coming months on a new ute. Sadly, as I see it, there's actually very little to gush about here. Click this link now, just up there. It'll take you directly to my exclusive report on this at the website. And here you will find roughly 15 minutes of exclusive critical analysis on video designed to help you make 
an informed choice in this domain, totally free and, importantly, ad-free as well, plus a full transcript, images and links to relevant resources. I'll look forward to catching up with you over there at the website. Thank you very much for watching.